Never been on a Maiden or a Madden cruise before. Seriously, just between me and me, is the ship going to be covered with coming soon banners everywhere? This is a good question, and we should really talk about this. So when you're going on an inaugural cruise, the first sailing of a new ship, whether it is Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, whatever, you should expect it not to be completely 100% ready. Now, it is not going to be covered necessarily in coming soon and not available yet. When we went on Wonder of the Seas, the escape room wasn't available. There weren't the full set of shows yet available. Like there were shows on there. Don't get me wrong. There were still entertainment and they had shows available. But like the Effectors 2 show wasn't available on the inaugural sailing. There were still other shows that you could see on there. So some of the entertainment may not be ready. There may be a, an, an activity or something that's limited or uh, not quite ready for prime time. That does occur sometimes. Um, I remember on Odyssey of the Sea, Zone Zero was not available on the inaugural sailing. And then it came on a little bit later. So Yes, you should expect some things. Most, yes, Royal, I can speak for Royal Caribbean. I can't speak for all cruise lines, but I feel like in most cases, and I've been on, you know, first sailings for, you know, ships like Wonder and uh, Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey. Odyssey, sure. Uh, Symphony, absolutely. Harmony, I think it was on there. So I have a decent track record of being on these ships uh, for their, at least their first couple sailings at the very least. And in all instances, you know, the the vast, mass majority of stuff has been open. Has it all been 100%? No. Will you see crew members on board working on some things? Yes. So really, going on a maiden sailing is a question for how you feel about that. For me, I couldn't care less. I, I really wouldn't, doesn't bother me. Um, there is something fun about being on the inaugural cruise. It's like a giant party. And a lot of people who are on there are big cruise fans. And it's good to see cruise fans. It's kind of like a homecoming event in a way. Um, but the, but it's okay there's not 100% because even if a ship was operating with every single activity and entertainment factor open, you not, you might not actually have time to do that anyway. Like, go on go on Wonder of the Seas today. You It's hard to do everything on a 7-night cruise to begin with. So I don't look at that as a negative. I look at that as, that as an opportunity, an incentive to book it again later on and 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 try new things out. So, um, But you should be aware of that. I think it's a very, very... Um, it's a very good question, and I think it's a very important distinction to understand because a lot of people who are new to this might not understand that with maiden cruises, there can be some things that are not quite 100% there. So um, there you go. Are junior suites worth the extra cost? Depends how much more, Joe. Um, junior suites really, despite the name, are more like extra large balcony rooms, um, and I generally tell people it depends on how much more it is. You know, for a seven-night cruise, you know, you can make the argument that, you know, if you spend... If it costs you more than hundred less than hundred dollars a day per person or per day, whatever, like that's a decent amount. But I wouldn't pay any old charge for it. It really depends how much more it is from a balcony cabin, which is kind of a lame answer because you want to know. You want me to tell you yes or no, and unfortunately, the answer is it depends. When will the icon prices go down back to normal real cream prices? Will it take a year or when the next ship comes out? It's a process. Definitely, Wu Tang Life. Uh, as new ships come out, older ship prices go down. You can. Look at the Oasis class, Wu Tang. Look at the price of Oasis and Allure and Harmony versus Symphony versus Wonder. It's just the it's the way of the world, my friend. And it is the way of you when you go on a new ship, you pay a premium for it. That's how this is how they do business. That have always done business. New ships will always cost you more. So the answer to your question, honestly, is just that basically when Utopia comes out, Icon Two, that will drive prices down for existing ships. It's just the way that it works. So, um. Yeah, you're going to be waiting a little bit longer, but that's okay too. That's why there's, you know, there's 27 ships in the fleet. So if you, if Icon's prices are not in your wheelhouse, you know, there's a lot of great alternatives. You are not slumming it on Oasis or Odyssey. Remember Odyssey? Remember when Odyssey was the new ship? Man, talk about bad time. I mean, it's good that it came out, but like, boy, she missed out on like her honeymoon period. It was like, she's like, Odyssey was like, I'm here. And then whoop. Off to the side because Wonder arrived. So, but yeah, it, listen, it, it it all has a it has a trickle down effect as new ships come out there. So, can I purchase hard alcohol import? Can I check it with the cruise and bring it home? Yes, absolutely. So, what what's going to happen, Nick, is if you buy liquor in a in a port of call that you're visiting, they'll confiscate it when you get on the ship, and they'll give it back to you on the last night of the cruise. So you can bring it home. So, no problems there whatsoever. What's your favorite thing to do in San Juan, Puerto Rico? I love walking around Old San Juan. Last time we were there. Um, we walk off the ship and we just walk, we just get off the ship and we just explore old San Juan. 
and there was this car selling awesome pastries, like fresh made pastries right out of the trunk of the car. And I was like, this is great. Great starts. So we just we did that. We walked up, got a beer um, at the top of, of, of San Juan and old San Juan right by the fort, drank a beer, enjoyed the view, watched somebody walk a, a pet goat. Have dinner, like explore. There's uh, the forts are amazing. If you haven't seen the forts before, um, there's a lot of great shopping in the city. Um, there, there's it's, it's just a really cool city to explore. I don't recommend actually booking any tours. You don't need a tour. You dock right in Old San Juan, just walk around and explore it on your own. What is the one thing you're most excited about Icon? Ooh, well, so that we know about right now. The hideaway area really appeals to me. I think that's going to be a really fun area. I think Surfside is a wonderful idea. I only wish my kids were younger. Like if this were five years ago, Surfside would have been a godsend for my children. By the time we go on um, Icon, I think my, my oldest will definitely be two. She'll be a teenager. And the younger one is going to be like nine or ten or something. So it's not that they won't enjoy aspects of it. They still like going to Splashway Bay, you know, on, on cruise ships. So they still enjoy that, but it, it won't be quite in their wheelhouse necessarily. But I, that being said, I think it's wonderful for families, just, you know, just my, my family. So Hideaway Beach really sounds awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what all the dining venues are. For me, dining has become a huge draw for what makes Royal Caribbean fun. So looking forward to that. The show's on board. I mean, when it's a new ship, Brandy, latest and greatest that is the name of the game and i absolutely love that so yeah will there be a group cruise on icon there is june 29th 2024 june 29th 2024 book it now come join us for it. it'd be awesome yeah we, i just couldn't resist the option the opportunity to, to to experience icon together and the nice thing is by doing june i think for most families their kids can be out of school this is obviously you want to bring your kids but i do i want to bring my kids on board and then on the other part of it, uh, Kristen, is that, you know, again, I talked about earlier about, you know, inaugural cruises. Sometimes not everything's not 100%. By June, I think they should have a lot of things ironed out, which will be great. So I think it's a really good opportunity right there. Does the three-night dining package work on a week-long cruise? On one or just three dinners or you get lunches too? It's whatever you want to do, TJ. You can do lunch. You can do dinner. It's, it's three meals. You pick them. Lunch, dinner, whatever works for you. You can make it work while. So you just have to make reservations. You can't book anything until you get on board the ship, TJ. So once you get on board, then you go ahead and book it. Hotel recommendations for Port Canaveral. Um, there are a lot of great hotels. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of new ones. Um, that uh, the Radisson. Uh, there's the Town Place. I think it's Town Place Suites is pretty good as well. There's a lot of great hotels there. Um, the Radisson and the Country Inn and Suites is usually where we go. I stayed at a wonderful hotel. It wasn't in Port Canaveral per se. It was in Cocoa Beach, which if you're coming from Orlando Airport, it's on that main highway that takes you right to Port Canaveral. It's like one or two exits before there. And it's a little marina hotel and it was fabulous. Um, tons of space, apartment style. It was just, it's, you're not in Cocoa Beach. So you can't like walk around and do the Cocoa Beach stuff, but it wasn't a bad idea. Um, and the other thing to consider, Nick, is if, if you're, you know, if you're flying in late, let's say your flight gets into Orlando seven, eight o'clock at night. Okay. The night before your cruise. So all you need is a room before your cruise. I would just do a hotel near Orlando and then drive to the port the next day. It's a short drive, 45 minutes away. So you don't have to worry too much about not getting there. Um, and the hotel rates are usually much cheaper in Orlando. So if all you need is a hotel room and you're not going to do anything in Cocoa Beach or, 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 um, you know, Port Canaveral area, then just stay in Orlando and then drive the next day. But if you're going to do the, if you're going to come in at like, you know, noon or earlier and you're going to spend the day by the beach then yeah absolutely you want us to go to Cocoa beach so icon has no more suites is that possible well it's probably possible for the sailing you're looking at um especially if you're looking at that inaugural sailing it can definitely sell out um there's a couple of factors at play here when it comes to a ship like icon number one this is the first day there is a lot of excitement and hype around this ship so you're going to get a lot of people who are uber cruisers booking and typically, when a cruise goes on sale, in general, suites are the first kind of category to go. Now, something to keep in mind is that we are, what, well, more than 12 months away, right? We're like, uh, where do we in October? So, you know, 14, 15 months away from this sailing. People will cancel, okay? People will think today, I'm going to book it. And there'll be people who are like two months from now, a week from now, six months from now, final payment date from now, say, I booked What? And I paid what can't do that anymore. My kids got to get braces, you know, something and, and they cancel. So things will change, but yes, um, I'm not surprised to see that 
especially on like an inaugural sailing or even during some very popular weeks of the year, maybe Christmas week or things like that, that a lot of the limited capacity or limited amount of uh, staterooms are not available. That's just a testament to how popular these options are there right now. So uh, we have 19 more days to waste of the season. Want to know Sky Class offers concierge prior to sailing? What are their features? Sky Class features? Yes. Um, you'll get an email from the concierge about a week before your cruise, maybe a couple days, maybe a week, um, inform introducing themselves, giving you a list of all the benefits you get. And you can absolutely email them back and say, hey, can you book me specialty dining? Can you book me uh, entertainment? They can totally take care of that for you. Um, but really, the 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 best benefits of, of doing Sky Class, you're going to get free internet on board for everybody, which is really nice. Uh, you're going to get uh, access to the concierge lounge. So a sweet lounge, I should say. So you get free drinks in the for a good part of the day there. Uh, the, the, the concierge access itself, priority embarkation and disembarkation. The disembarkation is my favorite perk of being in a suite. They walk you off the ship. You get to skip the whole line. It's really, really nice. What bars will be on Icon of the Sea? So we know for sure like bars like, you know, the Trellis Bar in Central Park, um, the Schooner Bar, and uh, the, the English-style pub. Those will all be there. But again, Royal Caribbean Andrew has not yet revealed the full list. We only know some of them. And again, we have an article about the bars and restaurants that we know of for sure on Icon of the Seas over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I posted that, I believe, on Saturday. And uh, it's still on the homepage. You can find it over there. And, um, you know, there are places like the Giovanni's Italian Wine Bar will be there. That'll be your wine bar. Instead of vintages, they're going with that idea. Um, i trying to think off the top of my head. Other, I mean, there'll be a pool bar for sure. And things of that nature. Um, but we only know some of the options, not the full list of them currently. What are the benefits of owning Royal Caribbean shares? What's the minimum necessary? Oh, it's 100 shares. Number one, let me put it this way. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't, so please do not buy Royal Caribbean stock because Matt said anything about buying Royal Caribbean stock. But the you should buy stock because you think it's a good long-term investment, not for benefits. But if you have at least 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock, then you can um, actually benefit you get certain benefits by um, emailing Royal Caribbean, attributing it to your account, and you get extra onboard credit. Um, essentially, that's what it gets you. You need to own at least 100 shares. So I wouldn't tell you that you should buy stock purely for that reason. It's a nice benefit to it. I think you should buy stock because you think it's a good financial investment. Um, but, you know, again, don't take financial advice on YouTube, certainly. But the benefits are if you do own 100 shares of Royal Caribbean stock or more, then you get a certain amount of onboard credit depending on the length of your cruise. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.